So if a patient presents to you with numbness in the hand, it's important to work out what is the cause of their numbness. And this requires a bit of a detailed history. It's important to know whether one hand or two hands are involved, because if two hands are involved, this could be a generalized neurological condition such as neuropathy secondary to diabetes or other neurological conditions. Sometimes both hands can be involved in peripheral neuropathies such as carpal tunnel syndrome or cubital tunnel syndrome or radiculopathy, but it's less common and usually the hands behave slightly differently if both are involved. It's important during the history to work out if the pins and needles are in the median nerve distribution or on the nerve distribution of the hand. But sometimes cubital tunnel and carpal tunnel syndrome can coexist so that all the fingers in the hand may be numb. If you think it's carpal tunnel syndrome because the thumb, middle and index fingers are affected, you can further test this by testing for tenels at the wrist or testing phalanx tests to see if bending the wrist with pressure over the median nerve brings on the symptoms. If all these symptoms are positive, I'd consider this a typical carpal tunnel syndrome and no further investigation is needed and the patient can be uh, advised on either conservative or surgical management depending on the severity of their symptoms. Certainly if muscle wasting is present, I'd recommend surgical intervention. If the symptoms are atypical and the clinical examination doesn't match, then nerve conduction studies are recommended before onward referral. With cubital tunnel syndrome, all patients should have nerve conduction studies and EMG as a baseline to look for muscle wasting, but I wouldn't let this delay referral to a surgeon because in most cases, the muscle wasting can cause quite rapid decrease in function. And I recommend that these patients have their cubital tunnel decompressed as soon as possible. And the nerve conduction studies and EMG are used as baseline investigations in this case. If you think that the neck may be involved because the symptoms are coming from the neck all the way down into the hand, then neurological examination and a possible MRI of the cervical spine may be indicated because these are often treated by spinal surgeons rather than upper limb surgeons. Recently, some CCGs have suggested that carpal tunnel decompression be treated of, as a procedure of minimal clinical importance. But the British Society for Surgery of the Hand have contested this because chronic carpal tunnel syndrome and delaying treatment for carpal tunnel can cause significant weakness and disability in the hand, which in the long run will cost the patient and the NHS to manage these patients. We therefore think that if you think your patient has carpal tunnel syndrome, that they should be referred as soon as possible, particularly if they have muscle wasting. They should be advised that these procedures are effective and have a quick recovery, can often be done under local anaesthetic with minimal disruption to their life. And I'd recommend sending them on for surgical consultation. If CCGs won't fund their surgery, then I would recommend that patients consider having this privately because the longer the nerve is left compressed, particularly if symptoms are permanent, the more muscle wasting, weakness and disability the patient's gonna have. And most of these are not recoverable.